Hi. So today's job report was a bit disappointing, but the 80,000 increase in payrolls is pretty much what we should expect with an economy growing around 2% or slightly less. And actually, there were a few bright spots like the increase in average hourly earnings and average weekly hours, and the unemployment rate did hold steady at 8.2%. But of course, the report raised all the usual cries of, where is the Fed? People in the economic mainstream, lawmakers, TV pundits and talking heads, everyone was out there saying it was time for the Fed to step in again and help the economy. Not like it's helped that much in the past. Interest rates have gone all the way down to zero and economic growth is stagnated. Yet despite this, we still hear, where is the Fed? When will we get another round of QE? The Fed needs to roll out its bazooka as, as, as if it even had a bazooka. They don't have a bazooka. They don't have any weapons at all. If anything, they have one of those little price label thingies that the supermarket clerk uses when he puts prices on cans. Because the only thing the Fed can do is set interest rates. That's it. And there's a lot more that goes into demand than simply interest rates. For example, if you don't have a job, then <laughs> the cost of a loan is pretty meaningless because you probably can't borrow money anyway. In other words, the Fed can do very little, if anything, to affect demand, yet all we keep hearing are these so-called very smart people saying that the Fed needs to do more. There's no more that the Fed can do. Well, what about quantitative easing, you ask? Well, what is quantitative easing anyway? That's when the Fed adds reserves to the banking system by buying assets, usually government securities, from the public. The idea is that more reserves will encourage banks to lend, which is, by the way, a totally discredited idea. But they keep pinning their hopes on this for what reason, I don't know. I say it's totally discredited because even members of the Fed understand that bank lending is not constrained by reserves. Take this quote by Peter Stella, who was the former head of the Central Banking and Monetary and Foreign Exchange Operations Division at the IMF. He said, and I quote, My frustration lies in my inability to explain to sophisticated people why in a modern monetary system, fiat money, floating exchange rate world, there is absolutely no correlation between bank reserves and lending. And more fundamentally, that banks do not lend their reserves. Well, I can tell you this, Peter's not the only one who's frustrated, I can assure you. So in other words, there could be one dollar of reserves in the banking system and that wouldn't stop banks from making loans because the loan itself creates both a new deposit and new reserves. Moreover, as Mr. Stella said, banks don't even lend their reserves. Reserves are used primarily for clearing checks and meeting cash demands from customers. Any excess reserves are reinvested to earn some interest. And anyway, if you think about it, why would a bank lend its reserves, which, by the way, would entail risk, when it can create a loan without having to even use reserves, and when the loan itself creates more reserves? The whole idea is sheer stupidity. Now, you can bet this guy Peter Steller and other central bankers, they all, they all hang out together. They all know this to be true, yet you have a vast majority of the people in the world of finance and economics and banking who keep saying that the Fed has to do more to stimulate the economy. Like what, I ask? Okay, let's just say the Fed believes its own lies and decides to do another round of QE. Let's say it's a really big one, a bazooka, a trillion dollar bazooka. So what just happened? It means the Fed buys a trillion dollars worth of bonds from the public, the level of reserves or cash balances in the banking system just went up by a trillion, but the level of government securities held by the public just went down by a trillion. So, nothing happened. No new money is in anyone's hands. The only thing that happened was the composition of the assets that the public hold has changed. That's it. Does it mean that everyone's going to now run out and start spending? Hardly. In fact, they'll probably just take all that cash and put it right back again into those bonds to earn some interest. Ha! And here's even another way to look at it. The effect of buying a trillion dollars worth of bonds is the same thing as if the government never sold those bonds in the first place. So in other words, our debt just went down by a trillion. That's really the way we ought to look at it. The government just bought back a trillion of its own bonds. Where, where, who has the bonds? The Fed has them, which is part of the government. And here's the really crazy part. The Fed gets paid interest on those bonds by the Treasury, the government. So the government is paying interest to the Fed on its debt 
and then the Fed hands that money right back again to the government. The whole thing is insane. The government doesn't need to pay interest to itself. It's just a totally stupid idea. And by the way, the Fed could just rip up those bonds it bought and the whole debt would be gone. Poof, just like that. That's how the debt could be eliminated. That's how easy it would be. Yet we continue these crazy, with these crazy, illogical, contorted schemes of the government buying back the government's debt and then the government paying interest to itself and saying that we have a debt problem. The whole thing is ridiculous and it could be eliminated in one keystroke if anyone had any sense. Instead, we keep telling ourselves that we have a debt crisis and we can't pay for education and health care and infrastructure and job support and food for the hungry or aid to the states or basic science or all the other things we need so desperately. It's total insanity. So expect to hear more doom and gloom about the economy and cries for the Fed to do something. And most likely the Fed's going to do another round of this useless quantitative easing, even though they pretty much know it does nothing at all. And we'll hear all the comical warnings about our debt and we'll allow that ignorance to handcuff ourselves, which only creates more and more poverty, which is the real legacy that we will be passing along to our kids and grandkids. Well, anyway, that's it for now. This is Mike Norman saying bye-bye. See you next time.